Hey guys, it's Alex Torelli and welcome to The Hand of the Day. I'm bringing you this one here from Milan. Uh, for more about my trip, insights, and of course, all the hand analysis and strategic breakdown, stuff that I only share on my blog, head over to alectorelli.com after this video. Uh, a lot of personal life stuff over there, as well as some fun facts and um, a lot more of the math behind this hand. So check that out after this video. Today's hand comes from Katarina. Uh, one of my first female hand of the day inquiries, and of course it was the most popular video this week. So uh, thank you for that, Katarina, and it's, uh, it's an awesome hand. Creativity in poker. So if you haven't already checked that hand out or my Hello Alex series, head over there and check that out as well. This is a really interesting spot. It comes from a tournament. We're here in the early stages of the tournament. Uh, the blinds are 10-20, and we're out of position here. We're in the small blind. And I really like this hand. I chose this one, not only because it was the most popular, but also because it really does give us so many different options of ways to play the hand. And I feel like there's a lot of insights that I could share with you about different options, different ways to craft your plan and think about the decision-making process in tournament poker. So guy opens on the button to 55. I like Katarina's analysis here when she says that it's early stages of the tournament, there's no antes. People are generally a little less aggressive, even though our opponent is on the button, he is gonna be opening with a wide range. We don't really wanna get into a spot where we're playing a big pot out of position for a lot of chips when there's just not that much to gain. For that reason, I don't really mind flat calling here, even though our hand is a little bit face up, it's very difficult to play out of position and there's not a lot of good flops for us. But a lot of my decision-making process would be dependent on the big blind. Is the big blind a fish? Uh, that's gonna also affect how light my opponent is opening. So the worse that the big blind is, the more likely I am to flat call to play a pot with the big blind where I'm likely to make more money. Consequently, the better that the button is, the less likely I am to three bet because I don't wanna be inflating the pot out of position against a really good opponent. So it's hard to say in a vacuum exactly what I would do here, but I definitely uh, would toss it up. I mean, sometimes I three bet, sometimes I flat call. Again, that's why this hand is so interesting. There isn't really an absolute right way to play the hand. A lot of it depends on the opponent and the situation. So use judgment here um, to think about what the best decision is for you. Anyway, we decided to 3-bet to 140. Again, I'm not opposed to it. It, it could be a great play, um, but the button now just calls. So we'll go heads up to the flop. The flop is absolute gin for us. King 7-3 with King 3 of diamonds. Awesome flop. We essentially flop the nuts. It's pretty much impossible. Our opponent has two kings. So now the question shifts from you know, not how do we pot control or how do we, uh, you know, damage control this hand out of position, but how do we extract the most amount of value from our opponents? Again, I like what Katarina said here that sometimes they want to mix up the play by checking. The thing that I don't like about that and the thing that you really have to ask yourself here, Katarina, is how would you play the hand if you flopped air? So if you had Jack-10 suited or Ace-Jack offsuit, all those times when you have absolute bluffs, you're going to bet the flop. So when you check here, it's a little bit fishy. It's a really dry textured board. There's not a lot of hands you're gonna be checking here that are bluffs. So when you check, it sort of is one of those spots where you're like, well, if you would have had nothing, you would have bet. So when you check, you must have something. It's an ironic situation in poker, but the board texture combined with your aggression preflop leads me to think that it's likely you have something here and you're not gonna fold to a C bet. So for that reason, I'd be much more likely to bet my whole range here. Uh, it just looks too strong when you check. And I know that's ironic, but if you really think about the situation and how you're gonna react with your air, you'll see that all the times that you check, you have something because you're always going to bet when you have nothing. So I balance my range. I would bet with everything and try to get value from a king. Uh, that being said, we did go ahead and check and our opponent bets about half the pot. I do like check calling here. Once I do check, you make your range look weaker. You make it look like you have ace high or pocket tens or something like that, a bluff catcher essentially. It doesn't look like you have a strong hand here when you check call. So when you do check, I like the check call. So good job on that. 
All right, we go to the turn. As you mentioned, the turn is a great card for us. It's an ace. Um, of course, it's likely that our opponent picked up an ace, possibly. He also maybe picked up a lot of equity on the turn that he might continue bluffing with, with something like Queen Jack. The good thing about the ace isn't just the fact that our opponent might have hit an ace, but it's also that it's a good bluff card for him because it's unlikely that we have an ace in our hand. All the aces that we could have in our hand would have bet the flop. We're never really gonna check call with ace-jack offsuit. I mean, maybe we are, but I think that it's more likely our opponent thinks the ace is a good card to continue bluffing then he's scared that we hit the ace. So I kind of like that this card came on the turn. I think it's likely he's gonna continue bluffing. It's also possible that he has an ace in his hand and he's gonna now pick up a lot of equity and he's gonna value bet it. So a lot of good things happen for us on this turn. We check, our opponent bets half the pot, and now here I really like the idea that you check raised. I think check calling again, um, I, I think it's just too unlikely that our opponent's gonna bluff the river. We don't really know where we're at. He's not gonna value bet lightly, I don't think that often. And all the hands he's gonna value bet the river with are probably gonna call a check raise on the turn. I think he's likely to call a check raise on the turn with an ace. Um, the only thing is I would challenge you is check raise a little bigger here. I think you wanna check raise bigger so that he calls your raise on the turn and then he can call your all in bet on the river. When you min raise here on the turn, it's, it's a little bit too small of a bet and uh, you know you can't build the pot enough. You don't really cut down on his price to call you with a draw. So I would make it a little bigger here, like 700. He's still gonna call with the exact same range. So you're pretty much just losing money, not making it bigger, maybe even eight, 900. Uh, I still don't think you're gonna, he's gonna fold any of those hands. So anyway, check raise a little bigger here if you're gonna check. Uh, interesting way to play the hand. It's a, it's a little awkward play. Uh, I don't really know what to make of it from his point of view, but uh, we go to the river. When he calls us here on the turn, I think it's really likely he has an ace. I think that he could have a draw as well, but I don't think he ever has a king in his hand. I think he's never gonna bet the turn with a king. So I'm pretty confident that on the river, uh, we're gonna make a lot of money. I don't think he's gonna fold an ace to us that often if it's a weak player in a tournament. So I'm just going for value here on the river. It, it, it blanks off completely. I'm just gonna bet pretty big. I like that you bet half the pot. Um, I mean, you could bet even bigger than that, maybe even like 1400. The maximum amount that you think he will call is what I would bet here. So a lot of it's in the game flow, a lot of it's what you know about your opponent, but the idea here is to go for a big value bet, which you did, so credit to you. Now we get raised, and it's a really awkward spot to get raised here. I don't think that, I think it's almost impossible our opponent has Jack-10, unless he has specifically Jack-10 of diamonds, which of course, there's only one combination of that hand. So I think that your hand is always Good here, I think he could have two pair like ace queen. I don't really know why he would raise that hand though because you're essentially representing better than that when you check raise the turn, but people don't hand read really well sometimes in tournaments, especially in the early stages. Uh, when the stacks are deep, they don't really have too much experience hand reading in these spots. So I think people might overplay their hands a little bit. He might even have bottom set here too and you might have just coolered him. Either way, I think your hand's just too big to fold. I don't would, would ever fold in this spot and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to call here. I'm not like the most excited call of my life, but I'm, I'm never folding here and I'm pretty happy to put the money in. I think uh, there's just too many times that he's just up to something fishy or he's mainly just overvaluing his hand. I don't expect it to ever be a bluff, but I just think that ace queen is a really likely combination and he just hit two pair on the river. He saw that it was only a min raise to go all in and he just pushed it in and said, screw it. So anyway, I'm calling here all day. I think to answer your question, uh, you know, really have no other choice but to call here. So. Whatever, it is what it is. If he has you beat, tough luck. Anyway, we go on to call and uh, he reveals, looking over the hand now, he has ace 10 of diamonds, which is pretty questionable. I have no idea what he was thinking. He's never getting called by a worse hand. He's not really bluffing. He's never gonna get you to fold a better hand. Uh, so I have no idea what he was doing with ace 10. But anyway, it just goes to show that sometimes people play very oddly and frankly bad in spots like this in tournaments. So. Um, Whatever, it is what it is, more power to you. You won the money, good job. Anyway, for more detailed analysis of this hand, uh, head over to my blog, alectrelli.com, after this video. Uh, there's a link up here too, and uh, you'll see a ton more breakdown about the math behind the hand and some of my thoughts that I only share with you guys on my blog. So check that out. For more of my hand of the day, also you could submit your hand to me on my blog. Please keep it on the website, I get a ton of submissions, but it's nice to have them all in one place. So if you could do that through my website, it would be awesome, I could get to you guys put them up there for the hand of the day, the Hello Alex series, or any questions you guys have for me. All right guys, see you next week. Thanks for watching. See you from Milan, ciao. Yeah.